Welcome back students, this is Dr. Mercado speaking. In today's lecture, we are going to begin covering chapter three, which deals with the adjusting process. This is accounting 2401, principles of financial accounting. And in today's lecture, we are gonna be covering problem 3.1a, okay? Which basically entails completing a variety of adjusting entries. Now, before I begin my lecture for the day, I want to thank all of you for your continued dedication, commitment to the course. Thank you for listening to my lectures. Thank you for reaching out if you have any questions. Thank you for completing your weekly assignments. Okay. Um, if you are struggling with any of the content, please let me know. Uh, reach out to me. Um, I'm available during my scheduled office hours, or you can always send me a Blackboard message, a Pronto message, an email. Or if it's some sort of an emergency, you can call or text me at my mobile number, which is provided in the syllabus, okay? So just keep up the amazing work. I know that some of these homework problems are long, but we need to practice, okay? In accounting, um, I can lecture all I want, uh, but you're not gonna understand it unless you do it, okay? So the more you do it, the better you're gonna get at it, okay? So please continue working on those assignments. Um, you know, create study groups if you want, you know, create groups that way in, within your class you can establish, um, you know, uh, collaboration amongst your group members or your, your classmates, help each other out, supplement each other's understanding of what you're reading, um, and I'm always here to assist in anything that I can as well, okay? So, chapter three, okay? In chapter two, we ended chapter two with completing an unadjusted trial balance, okay? Basically, an unadjusted trial balance proves the equality of your debits and your credits, okay? It makes sure that your debits and credits balance, okay? Now, many of these account balances are reported in the financial statements without any change, okay? So, the basically, the unadjusted trial balance, for most case, that's what we're gonna be reporting on our financial statements. But there are some exceptions. There are some accounts that need to be updated every end of the accounting period, okay? So some accounts on the unadjusted trial balance require adjustments, okay? Now, these are the examples of the adjustments that need to happen. Some expenses are not recorded daily, okay? The example provided on your book says that the daily use of supplies would require many entries with small amounts. Also, the amount of supplies on hand on a day-to-day -day basis is normally not needed. So what happens? We buy supplies, we put them in a storage closet, we use them up during the month. At the end of the month, we go and we check what we have, and then we do an entry, one single entry, at the end of the month to true up our figure. Okay? Instead of, oh, well, I, I got a, a, you know, uh, a rim of paper. Let me expense it to my department. No, we wait till the very end and we do it. Um... Revenues and expenses are incurred as time passes rather than as a separate transactions. For example, re rent received in advance, which is unearned rent, expires and becomes revenue. Okay, So in this particular case, we had received money in advance. We had not provided the service yet. The, re the re uh, rent had not been used up. Now at the end of the period, the rent has been used up. We've provided the service for the month. Now we can take that revenue into account, okay? The same thing goes for prepaid insurance. We pay in advance for our, our insurance. We have to wait until we use up the insurance to record the entry. So once the insurance expires, we have to record uh, the expense with the passage of time, okay? Some revenues and expenses may be unrecorded at the end of the accounting period. So we received an invoice. We're not going to have time to process it, but we know that it's there. So we need to record an entry to take account um, that invoice that we received. Okay. So it says here, for example, a company may have provided a service to its customers and it has not billed or recorded at the end of the accounting period. So we need to make sure that we account for those revenues um, that have not been recorded, okay? Also, a company may not pay its employees until the next accounting period, even though the employees have earned their wages in the current period, okay? So these are some examples of some adjustments that need to happen, okay? So basically, the adjusting and updating of accounts at the end of an accounting period uh, before preparing your financial statements are called the adjusting process, 
Okay. The journal entries that bring the accounts up to date at the end of the accounting period are called the adjusting entries. Okay. All adjusting entries affect at least one income statement account and one balance sheet account. Thus, an adjusting entry will always involve a revenue or an expense account and an asset or liability account. Okay. So it is very important that um, we understand the adjusting process and we're going to be practicing recording some of these adjusting entries. So there's some types of accounts requiring adjustments. We have two general classifications, which are the accruals and the deferrals. Okay. So basically an accrual occurs when revenue has been earned or an expense has been incurred, but has not been recorded. Okay. If the accrual is for revenue, this is the adjusting entry that needs to happen. Okay. So revenue has, has been earned, but we have not made an entry. Okay. So the entry that would have to happen would be, we would debit accounts receivable and we would credit the revenue account. Okay. If the accrual is for an expense, the entry that would have to happen is we would debit the expense account and we would credit the payable. Okay. What this would do is this would set up a receivable, letting people know, you know what, individuals owe us money and this revenue was generated in this accounting period. We need to record the revenue in the month that it, in, it happened. So if we provided a service, we need to record that revenue. Even though we have not gotten paid yet, we have to record it the month that it was earned. The same thing for the expenses. Okay. Even if we have not paid that light bill, we used up the, ele the electricity this month. So we need to make sure that we put set money aside in a payable for when we pay money next month, that money actually was for an expense from the prior period. So we need to record the revenues and the expenses in the correct accounting period. Okay. Um, then we have deferrals. Basically, a deferral occurs when cash related to a future revenue or expense has been initially recorded as a liability or an asset. If the cash received is related to future revenue, it is initially recorded as a liability called unearned revenue. Okay. The adjusting entry in the period when the revenue is earned debits an under revenue account and credits a revenue account. Okay, so these are the unearned revenue entries that have to happen. So cash has been received for revenue that will be earned in a future period. Okay, the original entry, the initial entry would be we received cash and we recorded unearned revenue. Okay, once the revenue has been earned, we go ahead and we debit unearned revenue and we credit the revenue account. So the revenue account is not uh, affected until the actual revenue is earned. Okay. Um, for a prepaid expense, uh, cash has been paid for a future expense. Okay. For example, we've prepaid for our rent. We've prepaid for our advertising. We pay a lot of expenses in advance. We've prepaid for our insurance. We would go ahead and uh, the original entry would be we would debit the prepaid expense and we would credit cash. Okay. Um, the prepaid expense has been used to generate revenue. Once the expense has been used up, then we would debit the expense account and we would credit prepaid expense. Okay. So there's a wealth of information um, in your textbook. Make sure that you read over it. There's a lot of information about uh, the adjusting process. Okay. Now I'm just going to dive in into going over some of these adjusting entries. Okay. So here we have five adjusting entries that we're going to be going over. Okay. So the, it says on October the 31st, the following data was accumulated to assist the accountant in preparing the adjusting entries for Bickle Realty. Okay. So let's assume that we work for Bickle Realty and we provided this information. What are we going to do with it? Well, the first thing that they tell you here is that the supplies account balance on October the 31st is $8,125. Okay. The supplies on hand on October the 31st are $1,150. Okay. So I think they made a mistake on the date. The supplies account balance, let's see. The, the supplies account balance on October the 31st is 8000 Okay, no, so they're giving you both amounts. Okay, so they're telling you that the supplies balance initially was 8125 They went out there and they counted the supplies and they 
came back and they said, you know what, out of the 8,125 that we had in supplies, now we only have 1,150. Okay, so what does that mean? Okay. So that means that I started with 8,125 in supplies and we've used up during the period some supplies and we're only left up with 1,050, 1,150. So that means that during the period we used up $6,975 in supplies. This represents the amount of supplies used. Okay. So this is the amount that we have to record the entry for. Every month we have to acknowledge that some of these supplies are being used and we have to record the supplies expense for that period. Okay. So what happened? Well, we used up some supplies. Okay. All of these entries are happening as of October the 31st. Okay. The adjusting entries are done at the end of each accounting period, at the end of the month. Okay. So what happens? Well, we have to recognize that we've used up the supplies. Every time you use something up, it's an expense. So what did we use up? Supplies. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to debit my supplies expense. That way we record as an expense the supplies that were used during this period. Okay. So I'm going to have a supplies expense and that is going to be for the amount that was used. Remember, we had 81.25. We were left with 1150, so that means that we used 6,975 in supplies. Make sure that your debits always go first. Okay. Now, what happened to your supplies? You had 8,125. Now you have 1,150. So your supplies dropped. You have less supplies now. So because your supplies decreased, you should know your normal balances by now. Supplies is an asset. If a supplies decrease, then you would have to credit supplies. Okay, so make sure that you know your normal balances of your accounts. Supplies is an asset. If an asset decreases, you credit it. Okay. And then we're going to put here supplies used. And I'm going to put here. 8125 minus 1150. Okay. So that is my first adjusting entry. What did I do? I expensed the portion of supplies that were used during this accounting period. That way I can show an expense for the month for my supplies and my supplies balance can decrease. In my books, I have it for 8125. I need to bring that balance down to 1150. In order for me to bring the balance down, I need to go ahead and credit my supplies account so I can bring it down. Okay. Let me do a little T account here just to kind of illustrate. Okay. Uh, let me see. Bear with me. Mm, just so you can see what I am referring to. Okay. So this is the supplies account. Assuming we started off with 8,125, that is what the problem says. Supplies is an asset account. So my normal balance of supplies would be a debit. Okay. So that is your beginning balance. Okay. Let me, uh, and this is just so I can, so you can visualize. This is what I want you to do when you're doing your entries. Visualize or do T account so you can understand. Now the problem is telling you that your ending balance Okay, your ending balance is 1,150. Okay, that was provided to you right there. Your ending balance is 1,150. Okay, so we need to figure out, well, if I started off with 8,125, now I have 1,150 left. How can I bring my balance from 8,125 to 1,150? Well, I need to decrease my supplies balance. Okay, and that's what we're doing here. So the supplies account is going to get credited. Sixty-nine seventy-five, and this is your adjusting entry. Okay. So if we look at the T account, okay, let's look at the T account. Um, I started off with the eighty-one twenty-five debit. I'm going to subtract the sixty-nine seventy-five credit. And that's going to give me my ending balance of 1150. Okay. So visually, I started off with an amount 
they provided you your beginning balance and your ending balance and you basically had to figure out your adjustment of 69.75 okay so that's just so you can visually understand what is it that's going on in this entry okay we are reducing the balance of your supplies from what we had initially to what we have at the end of the month and then we have to true up our number okay okay so that is my first adjusting entry my second adjusting entry says the unearned rent account balance on October the 31st is $7,000 representing the receipt of an advance payment on October 1st of four months rent from tenants. Okay, so uh, the unearned rent account had a beginning balance of $7,000. Okay, so they paid the rent in advance. Okay, unearned rent. So we got paid $7,000 for unearned rent. Okay, um, so we have not provided the service. They paid us in advance, but we still need to provide, you know, the month's worth of rent. Okay, uh, so they gave us seven thousand for four, for four months worth of rent for our tenant. Okay, um, so uh, at the end of the of October, we had seven thousand uh, dollars. The month of October has already been used up. We've already provided the the service you know they've been able to use um, you know the office for that one month now we need to take that into account and bring that unearned rent balance down from seven thousand to the new amount because one month's worth of rent has already been used up okay so once again this entry is of October the 31st so it says here that they paid us $7,000 of rent in advance for four months. So that means that the rent for every month is $1,750. So $7,000 of rent for four months gives me a monthly rental of $1,750. The month of October's rent has already been used up. The rent has been, uh, the tenant has used the building for that month. So we can now acknowledge that we've provided the service. So what are we going to do? We're going to go ahead and we're going to debit unearned rent by 1750 which is the amount that we calculated. The 7000 divided by the four months is the monthly of 1750 Okay, So we've provided the service. Now we can go ahead and we can acknowledge and record the rent earned. Okay, Rent revenue. Rent is only recorded when it has been earned. So at the end of, for the whole month of October, we've provided the tenant with a building, you know, an office or whatever the case might be. Um, so now we get to record the revenue, okay? So this is rent earned. And then this is going to be $7,000 and we're going to divide it by four months. Okay. So we need to understand what's going on. Transaction two, we are in a realty company and we rent property. In this particular case, we rented a property. The tenants paid us in advance $7,000 for four months. Okay. At that point when we got paid, we had not provided any type of service. The customer had not used up any rent. Okay, A month later, they've used up one month's worth of rent. So now I can move my money from it being unearned rent to actually being earned rent. Okay, So what do I do? I need to decrease my unearned rent. That is basically a liability. We owe someone a service. So a liability has a normal credit balance. When we use up our liability, then we debit our account, okay? And now we can acknowledge that we've generated some income because we've actually provided the service for the month, okay? And that is what we're doing here. We're acknowledging that we have provided a service. The revenue has been generated because we were able to provide the service of providing the tenant with an office space for one month, okay? The third adjustment, Wages accrued but not paid at October 31st are $3,500, okay? So, this happens quite a bit, 
let's say for example your company pays your employees every Friday okay end of month falls on okay so we pay our employees on a Friday end of month falls on a Wednesday okay so let's say that we're looking at a Wednesday so that means that the wages earned uh, Monday Tuesday and Wednesday are from one month one period and then the wages earned Thursday and Friday are from another period so those that um, wages that were earned in Monday Tuesday and Wednesday in this month we have to accrue those wages why because my employees worked this specific month so we need to make sure that we put money aside for what we pay them we acknowledge that you know the employee is getting paid for five days but three of those days are let's say from January and then two of those days are from February okay so we need to always make sure that we pay even though we're not actually paying our employees we set money aside from the month that the actual wages were earned okay so in this case I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna debit wages expense because it is an expense in the current period this is when my actually my employees worked so the expense should be recorded in the month that it actually happened that my employees worked in January we are gonna charge in January okay that's just an example okay so in this case my employees worked in October because that's when um, the entry is being done and they're gonna get paid in November okay so but we need to make sure that we account for the wages expense in the month that it incurred so October is the month that my actual employees worked that is the month that the expense is going to be recorded now I'm gonna set the money aside and I'm gonna put it into a payable okay I owe this money to my employees okay I'm gonna pay them the following month we're Wednesday I'm gonna hold that money for two more days and then on Friday I'll cut a check and I'll take the money part of the money from here okay and the amount of the accrual as of October the 31st was provided for $3,500 okay so what are we doing we are recording the expense in the month that it happened my employees worked in October I am recording my expense in October even though my employees are not gonna get paid till November okay and anytime you set money aside for an expense that has not been paid you will always credit wages payable okay I used to work in a bank and um, I was I would oversee the accounts payable department as one of the departments that I would oversee and end of month was hectic we had to do so many end of month adjusting accrual entries um, it was just you know very overwhelming okay and every month it varied we had to do accruals for so many invoices we had to make sure we stay on top of um, we were like 35 branches we made we need to make sure that we accounted for everything from every branch so we had to have a lot of communication with our branches in case you know they had purchased anything um, they were expecting any um, items or any invoices that we would get copies so we could make the necessary entries in our books okay so um, adjusting entries end of period adjusting entries process is tedious okay so that happened on the 31st um, the next one we have is fees accrued but unbilled at October 31st are $23,000 so what does that mean that means that we provided a service okay but we have not billed them okay so we've earned this money but we haven't gotten paid okay we have not billed our customers and our customers have not paid us yet okay so what are we gonna do this is happening as of October the 31st so um, I want to set up an accounts receivable why people owe us money how much money they owe us twenty three thousand dollars okay so anytime people owe us money for something that you know we've provided a service and they haven't paid us we set up a receivable okay so now what happened well we actually earned some fees okay fees were earned we provided a service we're just pending to collect the money that's why we're setting up receivables okay so I'm gonna set up a receivable for ABC company for one two three company all of the companies that owe us money I'm gonna set them set it up that would be a debit that way I know these people owe us money but you know what the service was provided in the month of October so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna record my revenue which is my fees earned in the month of October you always record revenues and expenses when incurred okay 
So uh, accrued fees. I forgot to do a description over here. Accrued wages. Okay. And the last but not least, we have a depreciation of office equipment, three thousand dollars. So they've given the amount to you. So basically every month we have to depreciate and we'll talk about depreciation in later chapters. Uh, there's different ways of depreciating. Uh, but basically depreciation means that, you know what, the asset that we have in our books has lost value because we've used it up during the month. Okay, so the value needs to be adjusted so that way we can update our book value for that specific asset. Okay, so we have an account called depreciation expense. Depreciation expense is going to get debited. Remember, whenever you see the word account, the account expense, it would have a normal balance of a debit. So depreciation expense is going to get debited. Then we have a contra asset account called accumulated depreciation. Okay. And we are depreciating office equipment. Okay. Um, that will be $3,000, okay? So we have a depreciation expense. So what we have is in our book, we have the original cost of the equipment. Okay, whatever it costs me, then every month we're going to depreciate it, okay? To calculate my book value, it will be my initial cost of the equipment minus my accumulated depreciation that will give me my book value. That way I know how much each of my assets it's worth at any point in time. Okay, And of course the depreciation is going to be brought down all the way to the salvage value of the asset. And we'll cover depreciation more in detail later on. Okay, Just know that every time that you see an asset is depreciated, you will always debit depreciation expense. You will always credit accumulated depreciation. Okay, So what are we doing here? We are adjusting certain accounts for certain transactions that had not happened or that we had not updated in our system. Depreciation gets done every end of month. Okay, we need to figure out, do we need to make an accrual for wages? Have our employees worked and we have not paid them? Do we owe them any wages? And if you do, you have to put some money aside and record the expense for that specific period. Okay. Did we have any uh, fees uh, that were prepaid and now that we've actually been earned? Okay, Like in the case here of the unearned rent, where we paid rent in advance and not, you know, have we provided the service to those customers? If the answer is yes, then we need to make an adjusting entry. Okay, So it's just a matter of analyzing each transaction and understanding what is, that is, what is it that is occurring in each transaction. Okay, and then we need to record our adjusting entries before we prepare our final uh, financial statements. Okay, the second question says briefly explain the difference between adjusting entries and that uh, adjusting entries and entries that would be made to correct errors. Okay, so basically adjusting entries are planned. They happen at the end of each accounting period to update the accounts. They are required. Okay, correcting entries on the other side are not planned, but they arise only when, the, when they are necessary to make a correction. So let's say, for example, you posted an entry incorrectly, you debited the incorrect account, you credited the incorrect amount, something happened, you caught the error, you have to fix it. That is a correcting entry. That is not something that is required every end of month. That happens depending on the situation. Adjusting entries happen every end of month, okay? Accruals need to be made, you know, um, different accounts need to be updated. Um, depreciation needs to be recorded. You know, like I said, there's just very numerous entries and we're going to be seeing a lot of these uh, adjusting entries that happen. Uh, we need to update our prepaids. Uh, we need to record... Uh, you know, uh, we received invoices that we have not been paid. We need to set up accruals, deferrals. You know, different things need to happen every end of month. So it just depends on the information that is being provided to us. Okay. So very important that you understand. Make sure 
Debits always go on top, credits go on the bottom. The debits must always equal the credits. So um, let me see if our debits equal our credits. If they don't, we have an error somewhere in our entries. But in this case, yes, the debits are 38,225. The credits are 38,225. We are in balance, okay? So just make sure that you read each of the adjustments carefully uh, before analyzing and recording in your entries. If you have questions, I recommend you set up your T accounts. That way you can visually see what is happening in that entry, okay? So that is it for this problem. Uh, please make sure to remember that you have two attempts on your homework and I always keep the highest grade. Any questions or concerns, please let me know, okay? And that is basically it. Until next time, have a wonderful rest of your day.